like and share this channel okay guys now in this lesson we want to look at the double entry system for assets liabilities and capital as the name suggests guys double entry system this tells us immediately that this is a system where transactions are recorded twice once on the debit side of an account and once on the credit side of an account now in any business transaction two or more accounts are affected you have a receiver and a giver in other words something is coming into the business and something is going out of the business if you look closely at the diagram you will realize that the double entry system shows a debit side and a credit side what this means guys is that any account that is receiving we will debit any account that is given we will credit to record transactions using the double entry rule we prepare ledger accounts or t accounts at the top of the accounts is the title the right hand side of of the account is the credit side and is used to record anything going out of the business while the left hand side is the debit side and is used to record anything coming into the business in this transaction 2014 may 1 bought a motor van for five thousand dollars cash the first thing we want to identify is the accounts that are affected which is the motor van account and the cash account now that we have identified the accounts we want to identify which account is receiving and which account is given in this case motor van is coming into the business so we will debit the motor van account while cash is going out of the business therefore we will credit the cash account now we are going to prepare a set of transactions so that you can understand clearly how to record transactions okay guys so now we are going to record some transaction using the double entry principle so we're going to use our little activity on our right hand side of our page activity one to record some transactions now activity one asks us to write up the asset liabilities and capital accounts in the books of j elliott to record the following transaction now our first transaction is may 1 2017 started business with eighteen thousand dollars cash now the first thing you want to do is to identify the accounts that are affected now two or more accounts in every transaction two or more accounts are affected now when you read a transaction the first thing i want you to do is to identify the accounts now started business with eighteen thousand dollars cash or two accounts here are started business and cash once you see started business the account is called capital because it would have mean that the proprietor would have started the business with some amount of cash so our first account is capital so let's underline it and our second account is cash now the next thing i want you to do is to identify which account is receiving and which account is giving so it means that 
started business with $18,000 cash. It means that the owner would have put some money into the business in the form of cash. Therefore, capital would be given and cash receiving. All right. Once we identify the accounts that are given and receiving, we can go ahead to record our transaction. So the first thing we want to start with is the title of our account. And the title goes at the top. So we have a capital account and we have a cash account. Very well. Now, remember guys that this side is our debit side and this side is our credit side. So this is our debit side right here. Let's put in the DR to represent. And this is our credit side right here. Now, the account that is given, you will credit. The account that is receiving, you will debit. So capital in this transaction is given. So we will go to the credit side of the capital account. So we put in the year, month and day, May 1. And the detail, capital is given in the form of cash of 18000 Then we move to the next account, which is our cash account. Cash in this transaction is receiving. Therefore, we will debit the account. Anything going out of the business, you credit. Anything coming into the business, you debit. <laughs> so put in the year month and day the detail receive this money by capital of eighteen thousand so we quickly move to our next transaction may two bought fixtures and fittings for cash so we want to underline the two accounts so our our two accounts in this transaction are fixtures and fittings and the cash account. Now, the next thing we want to do is to identify which account is receiving and which account is giving. So you bought some fixtures and fittings. It means, therefore, that fixtures and fittings is coming in and cash is going out because it is the cash that you would have used to buy the fixtures and fittings. So let's prepare the accounts. So we have fixtures and fittings. And you do not draw up as an, another cash account, guys. Once you already have, have a cash account, do not draw up two of the same account. What you do is record each transaction pertaining to cash on the the one account just ensure that you record it on the correct side so fixtures is receiving so we will debit go to the debit side put in the year month and give me two cash that was how we received the fixtures and fittings of two thousand then we go to the cash account cash is given cash is going out so we go to the credit side of the account and we record our, our information to so May 2 May 2 what did you bought fixtures and fittings for $2,000 alright let me just correct this quickly and we move to the next transaction Good. Our next transaction now, May 3, bought machinery on credit from Duns Limited. So we want to identify the two accounts. So let's underline the two accounts. So our accounts here are machinery account and Duns Limited. The next thing is to identify which account is receiving 
and which account is given. Now you bought machinery, it means that machinery would have been coming into the business. You bought it from Duns Limited, so it means therefore that Duns Limited is the giver. Now let's prepare the account. So we would have the machinery account here, and we would have Duns, Duns Limited here. So machinery is receiving, so we go to the big side. 2017, we have May 3, we bought it from Guns Limited for $4,500. Then we move to Guns Limited. Guns Limited is the giver. So we are going to credit Dunn's account. So we have 2017, May 3. What did we receive from them? Machinery. Machinery. For four thousand five hundred, then we move to our next transaction. May four, S Black lent us two hundred and fifty dollars by check. So the first thing we want to do is to identify the accounts that are affected. So here the two accounts are S Black and check. Now once you see check, guys. The account is called bank. Once you see check, the account is called bank. So we're going to prepare our two accounts. So we will have our bank account here. And we would have S block right here. Now Let's identify which account is receiving and which account is giving. So S Block lend us some money. It means that S Block is giving while our bank account is receiving because she lend us this money by check. So we would go to the bank and we would debit because bank is receiving. Let me for. S block of 250. Then we will go to S block and we will credit S block account because this person is giving. She this account is the giver. So we put in the information me for bank bank of 250. Our next next transaction read bought a motor van paying five thousand dollars by check. Identify our two accounts here. Our two accounts are motor van and check. Once we see check, the account is called Bank. So we want to identify now which account is receiving and which account is giving. Bought a motor van. This would have been that motor van is coming in. We use check. The money would have been taken from our bank account to purchase this fixed asset. So bank would be giving and motor van receiving. We already have a bank account. So there's no need to draw up another bank account. What we are going to draw up now is the motor van account. Alright, so motor van is receiving, so it means that we would debit. Motor van is receiving, so we will debit the motor van account. That's me. Five.
the fifth bank of five okay, bank of five thousand then we will go to the bank account and we will credit because the bank is now given the two thousand and seventeen 2017 and we will have motor van is put in the month first that's May May 5th motor van of five thousand dollars all right now we will move to next transaction. Took it took seven hundred dollars out of the bank and put it into the cash. First, we want to identify our two accounts. So let's underline our two accounts. So we have bank. And our next account is cash. Now, if you took out of bank and put into cash, it means that bank is giving and cash is receiving. We already have a bank account and we already have a cash account. So we are just going to record on the correct side. So you took out of bank. So bank is giving. So we are going to go to the credit side to put in our information. So we took out of bank on May 6th. May 6th took out cash of 700. Then we are going to go to the cash account. Cash is receiving. So it means that we are going to go to the debit side. Put in our date, May 6th. See from bank, 700. All right, move to our next transaction, May 10th. Sold some of the fixtures and fittings by check. So we want to identify the two accounts. What are the two accounts again? We have fixtures and fittings and we have check. Once you see check, we know that the account is called bank. Now we want to see which of the account is receiving and which one is giving. If you sold some of the fixtures and fittings by check, it means that bank would be receiving and fixtures and fittings would be given so we want to go to go to the fixtures and fittings account and we will record on the credit side because it is given so on may 10 by bank of 400 let me just fix this so it represent it, it is on the correct side. So that's May 10. And then we will go to our bank account. So here's our bank account. Right? And we'll put in the information. So May 10 pictures for four hundred dollars. All right. Now we're going to go to our next transaction. May 14, repay part of Black's loan $200 by check. So let's identify the two accounts again. So we have Black's and we have check. And once we see check, we know that the account is called bank. So let's underline it quickly. Now, which account is receiving? Which account is giving? If you repay Blackstone, it means that Blacks would have been receiving and bank would have been giving because you're taking money out of the bank to pay Black. 
So let's record this transaction. Black is given. So we're going to record it. So on May 14, May 14, we have black for 200. Can we go to this black? May 14, she received this money by bank of 200. Now let's move to our next transaction. May 16, bought another motor van on credit from cars to cars auto. Now, quickly, we are going to identify the two accounts. So let's underline them. Motor van and our next account is cars to cars. Now we already have a motor van account. What we do not have is a cars to cars auto account. So we're going to prepare a cars to cars auto account. So we can quickly drop a cars to cars auto account. Quickly, let's draw it up quickly. So remember, any account that is receiving, we debit. Any account that is giving, we will credit. So here we go, we have our cars to cars auto. So we can see that information, cars, cars to cars. Awesome. Good. Now we bought motor van, so we the, the motor van account would be receiving. So on the debit side of the motor van account, we are going to record this information. So that is on May 16. So we're going to put in that information. May 16. We receive it from cars. to cars cars to cars for two thousand let's just put this for two thousand Let's just line this up with this figure because I want our figures to be neatly represented. And then on the credit side of Cars to Cars account, we're going to put in this information. The 60, what we receive from them is a motor van uh, for $2,000. Good. Let's fix this so it is represented on the correct side of the account. Our next transaction now is May 21, pay Duns Limited $4,500 by check. So we want to identify the accounts. So quickly, let's underline the two accounts that are affected here. We have Duns Limited, and we also have check. Once you see check, the account is called bank. Which account is receiving? Which account is giving? So in this case, we pay Duns Limited. So it therefore means that Duns Limited is receiving and bank is giving. So we can go ahead and record our transaction. Bank is given, so it means that we are going to credit the bank account. So May 21, credit the bank account because we make payments to Duns Limited of 4,500. So let's fix this so that it is represented on the correct side of the account. Very good. And then we will go to Guns Limited account. We pay them so they are receiving. 
So we will create the account. So on May 21, they received by bank 4,500. Very good. And our final transaction says, pay S Block the amount owing to him by cash. So let's go to S Block account. So before we go there, quickly let's identify the two accounts again and underline them. We have the S Block account and we also have cash. Which account is receiving, which account is giving. You pay S Block, so therefore S Block is receiving. You use the cash to pay S Block, so the cash account is giving. So we would have received a loan from S Block of $250. On May 14, we, we repaid some of the loan for $200. So the amount owing to S Block would be $50. So let's record that. May 23. This time we pay S block by cash $50. We debit S block because S block is receiving. Now we go to the cash account and we would credit the cash account. So that's May 23 with S block. S block of fifty dollars all right so that's the end let, let me quickly fix this transaction so that it is represented on the correct side of the account very well good now, so that's the end of all our transaction. We have recorded all the transaction using the double entry principle. So, key things that you need to remember is that the double entry principle states that two or more accounts are affected. One is debited and one is credited. You debit the receiver and you credit the giver. So in all transactions, two or more accounts are affected. Therefore, one account is debited and another account is credited. Now, when you get a set of transactions to record using double entry, the first thing I want you to do is to read the transactions, identify the accounts that are affected, then you try to find out which account is receiving and which account is giving. When you ascertain which account is receiving, you debit the account. And the account that is given, you credit the account. That's it for today's lesson, guys. I hope you have learned from the information provided. Please like and subscribe to this video and look forward to my next video on balancing off 